Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Zerith is a long-range mage champion with a couple of neat tricks. In addition to dealing tons of damage with his abilities, he also acts as a sort of artillery, bombarding enemies from long range. Zerith's passive is Ascended Form. A percentage of his ability power is converted into bonus armor, making him naturally durable against physical assailants. Arcano Pulse causes Zerith to briefly channel, then immediately deal damage to all enemies in a line. Locus of Power immobilizes Zerath for a short duration, giving him bonus magic penetration and increased range on his abilities. Zerath can also break out of this state by recasting the ability. After leaving this state, Zerath gains a temporary movement speed buff. Mage Chains damages and marks a single enemy for a few seconds. If Zerath hits the marked enemy with any other damaging spell, his target becomes stunned for a short time. Zerath's ultimate is Arcane Barrage, which damages all enemies in target area. For the next few seconds, this ability can be cast two more times for free before it goes on cooldown. Zerath's early laning is extremely strong. Once you learn to lead your opponents with Arcano Pulse, you can constantly poke them from out of counterattack range. By learning Mage Chains at level 2, you can further this harassment. Once he gets low enough, Exhaust and Flash will help you secure the kill. Zerath's Harass gets even stronger once you learn Locus of Power. Every time it's available, turn it on and poke at your lane opponent. Again, I'm able to constantly throw out Arcana Pulse, dropping Rise lower and lower. Unfortunately, Locus of Power does have a very long cooldown at low levels, and I end up wasting it before Arcana Pulse comes off of cooldown, meaning Rise lives. Grabbing Sorcerer Shoes by level 6 will in fact cause you to deal tons of damage. After missing Arcano Pulse, I lead with Mage Chains and trigger its stun with Arcane Barrage. Once stunned, Rise becomes an easy target for the rest of my combo, giving me my second kill of the game. At level 9, and with a moderate amount of AP, Zerath is an extremely good farmer. Once an enemy minion wave is coming, use Locus of Power with Arcano Pulse, then move back and launch another Arcano Pulse. In the interest of saving mana, you should last hit the cannon minion with your basic attack, but immediately taking the other six minions is extremely powerful. Xerath is even more powerful when wearing the golem buff. Once again, I push around Rise using Locus of Power, Arcano Pulse, and Mage Chains. Once I push Rise to his turret, he retreats to the jungle to escape. However, I take the chance with Locus of Power and Arcano Pulse, killing him in the fog of war. Ganking is also really powerful on Xerath. I spot a skirmish at the bottom river and activate Locus of Power once I notice Janna channeling Monsoon. Two shots of Arcane Barrage kill her and give an easy kill on Rise for my teammates. As we push bottom lane, I stay at Locus of Power's maximum range. The cooldown matches well with Arcano Pulse, so I deactivate Locus immediately after nuking my enemies. After picking up the kill on Rumble, I stay in Locus to drop Arcane Barrage, taking down Rise. As Riven has gotten out of range, I use Locus's movement speed buff to rush up to her, picking up the kill with Mage Chains. We get into a teamfight in mid. Again, I open with Locus of Power, poking at Janna. As Udyr comes in, I drop him with Arcane Barrage and then reactivate Locus to crush Rumble and Rise's health. As I push back into the battle, I get our team two more kills thanks to Mage Chains and the long range slow from Rather's Crystal Scepter. Xerath also has a number of tricks in Dominion on the Crystal Scar. After poking Riven off the capture point, I head to the brush below it and activate Locus of Power. I'm exactly in range for Arcano Pulse, forcing Riven to give up a point for good. Xerath's long range is extremely helpful against melee fighters. As Riven jumps me, I lead with Mage Chains and stun her with Arcano Pulse right as she initiates. Too low to fight, she runs only to be dropped by three shots from Arcane Barrage. As I flash away from Renekton, I wait until Mage Chains comes off cooldown, stunning him as I run for the Speed Shrine. Once he turns to fight Heimerdinger, I land another Arcano Pulse. I leap around away from Heimerdinger and prepare for another Arcano Pulse with Locus of Power. Now extremely low, I land Mage Chains for the kill. You really want to stay around the middle of the map as Xerath, as it gives you access to speed shrines and allows the most use of your long range. I head over to my team and help them pick up a kill on Blitzcrank, first using Locus of Power and Arcano Pulse. As he continues to run, I repeat the combo and kill him with Mage Chains. Shortly after, I make it up to the Windmill, taking down Riven with Locus of Power and Arcane Barrage. 
Once she falls, I chase Aurelia. Mage Chains with Rylet's Crystal Scepter makes it almost impossible for her to dodge Arcano Pulse, so we pick up the kill before she can reach the Health Relic. For runes, I take Magic Penetration Marks, Ability Power Per Level Seals, Ability Power Per Level Glyphs, and Flat Ability Power Quintessences. This setup is aimed at giving me early lane dominance, using Arcana Pulse to push around my opponent, while also scaling me into late game with lots of ability power. My masteries are 9021, taking Magic Penetration in Offense and making sure to take Increased Cooldown Reduction and Neutral Buff Duration in Utility. I take Exhaust and Flash, mastering both. I max Arcana Pulse immediately for consistent damage output. I take a point in Mage Chains at level 2 and leave it there as I max Locus of Power second. This ability order turns me into artillery pretty quickly, able to constantly toss out long-range spells. For items, I grab a Doran's Ring in Classic or Sorcerer's Shoes in Dominion. After adding Sorcerer's Shoes, I immediately grab Rabbitin's Death Cap. With my core build done, I add Utility and Damage with Riley's Crystal Scepter and Will of the Ancients. I finish out my build with Morello's Evil Tome for cooldown reduction and Void Staff if my opponents start to get more magic resist.